Greetings and welcome to another edition of What's Hot with CU Tranquility. I'm your host, Pete Pardo, publisher and CEO of SOT. Today is Tuesday, November the 14th. Like I've been saying for the last like week or so, we've got so much new stuff coming out. We're, we're coming at you almost every day here on uh, on What's Hot here on the Mighty YouTube. So let's jump right in because we got a bunch of things to go over today. So first on my list, it's going to be my co-pick of the week. The, the first two I'm going to talk about, I'm actually loving a lot. Uh, I actually couldn't decide which one to lead off with, so I just I just kind of closed my eyes and picked one. And this particular uh, one, it's, it's winning. It's it's got the pick. It's leading off the show. It is the debut from the new super group that's called that's calling themselves Sons of Apollo Psychotic Symphony. There it is, right there. I didn't really have a lot of expectations on this. You know, uh, you know, he, the basically the band is Mike Portnoy. No explanation needed of where he's been, what he's been doing. Uh, Billy Sheehan on bass, Ron Bumblethall on guitar, Derek Sherinian on keyboards, and Jeff Scott Soto on vocals. You know, when you think of think of it, kind of picture it. When they first announced that these guys were doing an album together, uh, I was kind of thinking that somewhat of an odd fit. You know, a couple of guys in the band. You know, the Soto fit with these guys. You know, Bumblefoot. Uh, you know, great player, but uh, wasn't really seeing it. We know the Portnoy and Sheehan work great together in Winery Dogs. You know that Sherinian is a fantastic keyboard player who's worked with uh, Portnoy before in Dream Theater. Sherinian's done some great stuff uh, with Black Country Communion. But how does it all work? Well, let me tell you. The first time I popped this in, I was like, holy shit, this is great. It, it's really, really, really good. The chops are there. There's some ridiculously playing on here. Um, the the riffs are heavy. Thal's guitar work on here is really really good. And for those of you who really haven't listened to him much at all, you know he did some like solo stuff way back in the day. He was kind of like one of those uh, guitar shredder guys. Uh, then he was kind of in and out of Guns and Roses over the course of the last like decade and a half or whatever. So he's kind of been around, but never like a, a big name. Well, that's probably all going to change here. He is playing up a storm on here. His riffs are bone-crunchingly heavy. The lead work is just dazzling. Sherinian is just shredding on his synths on here. There's some great Hammond organ tones. Really, really cool stuff from Sherinian. You know, Portnoy and Sheehan, they're great. They're a great rhythm team together. Heavy grooves. But for my money, Soto sounds unbelievable on here. Yeah, he's done. He's been a busy guy, you know, ever since he first burst on the scene way back in the '80s, singing for Ingmay Malmsteen's Rising Force, which actually was not him at his best. He, his vocals have improved tremendously over the years. He's done all sorts of work in the melodic rock and hard rock field. Uh, he's he's been playing with uh, singing with Trans Siberian Orchestra. You know, Jeff has kind of he's been around. He did a little stint in Journey as well. But I think he really kind of comes uh, into his own on this. This is this is what a supergroup should strive to be. I hope this is not just a one-off and these guys like really consider um, making this either a full-time or as, as much full-time as they possibly can because all these dudes are pretty busy. So, um, you know, just some great tunes on here. Memorable, really catchy stuff. You know, Coming Home and Lost in Oblivion. Love that song. You know, God of the Sun, Sign of the Time. It's just great stuff. And then the the last tune is like a chaotic instrumental, like reminiscent of like King Crimson meets Dream Theater. It's called Opus Maximus. I just I love this. Love it to death. Check it out. Sons of Apollo. All right. The co-feature of the day is another just fantastic album from a band that's been away for a couple of years. Uh, but they are back. We're and In fact, they're back on AFM Records this time around. Did a little label switch. I'm talking about Norwegian progressive slash power metal juggernauts Communic, where echoes gather. You know, all they they have they don't have a ton of albums to their credit. I believe is this the fourth or the fifth. I, I'm not. I forget off the top of my head. Every album they've ever released has been just damn rock solid. They're kind of like a moody, brooding. Uh, progressive metal band. They, they, it's they're they're really unique. I think if you could best describe their sound, it's sort of a more progressive, um, Nevermore slash Sanctuary that sort of thing. 
because their uh, lead singer and guitar player it does sound a little bit like Warren World Dane and some of the the riffs and the solos um, yeah kind of go down that avenue a little bit but not but they're very they're, they're, other than that they're pretty original sounding they're definitely darker sounding than a lot of progressive metal bands which I love a lot uh, this album is just great. It kicks off at like these two like lengthy multi-part suites that are just mind blowing, and then the album kind of ends on the same note with another multi-part suite with some songs in the middle. Just uh, you know, just kick-ass guitar riffs, heavy riffs, shredding solos, but tasty. Uh, they don't go berserk with lengthy instrumental passages, although there are plenty of them. Um, great vocals, just really dramatic songs. I just dig this a lot. Um, here are the guys right there. Sleeper hit of the year. Uh, you know, I, I, hadn't, I had no idea these guys were even putting out another album, and then it just kind of shows up one day, and I'm like, whoa, you know, one of those bands you haven't seen in a couple of years that you didn't realize how much you missed them, and now they're back, and it's like, Phew. so uh, without a doubt, two top ten finalists right here. Easy picks right there. Just if you don't already have them, if you haven't added them to your wish list or your shopping cart on wherever the hell you buy your music from, do it today. Trust me on that. All right, we're going to stick on AFM Records. Uh, the latest from the long standing, these guys have been around forever, Finnish uh, power metal band, Oz, Transition State. They have not released a new album of new material since 1991. All right, long ass time. These these guys have been around I think, since the late seventies. Uh, you know, one of those acts that kind of you always hear about, right? But if you ever actually listen to them, I'm guilty of that. I've always heard about these guys. I've listened to a little bit of their music here and there, but because they've been so inactive, uh, you know, for so many years, they just kind of like passed me by. Well, here's their new album, uh, Mr. Roughneck on drums. He's a founding member. He's basically put together a whole new lineup. Uh, and it's really solid, great new singer. The music is very, very good. If you like, you know, European style power metal, but not as heavy on the cheese factor, but really memorable songs, great guitar work, fantastic vocals, a lot of anthems. That's what you get here. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's quite good. I dig it a lot. Kind of nice to hear a, uh, a band that's been around for so long, but have been a little inactive for quite a long time, come back with something this potent. So one of the comebacks of the year? Absolutely. Check it out. Transition State from Oz from Finland. All right. We are going to switch gears, move away from metal to go into space rock. We've got a brand new one from a legendary figure in the space rock category. Of course, I'm talking about Nick Turner, ex of Hawkwind. Sometimes he goes out the road as uh, Nick Turner's Hawkwind or Nick Turner's this or Nick Turner's that or just Nick Turner. He's got a brand new album called Life in Space. That's that bad boy right here. If you love early, mid-70s Hawkwind, that's what you're going to get, Mr. Turner. He's, you know, he's just a legend, a legend in space rock. Uh, sings, plays sax and flute. He's got a very unmistakable sound, both vocals and, uh, and on the sax and flute. He's got uh, Nicky Garrett on guitar. He's been playing with him for a while. Hefera Moon on keyboards. We've got Bryce Shelton on bass, Jason Willer on drums. Simon House on violin, folks. Ex-Hawkwind guy. Also played with David Bowie, another legendary guy in, in space rock. Uh, Jurgen Engler on various keyboards, guitar and bass. Chris Late on keyboards. And Paul Rudolph on guest guitar on one tune from the Pink Fairies, also briefly in Hawkwind. Great, great album. Some atmospheric stuff on here. Some more upbeat, kind of jammy things. Uh, if you just like that kind of hypnotic, kind of heavy, just ethereal Hawkwind style. You get a lot here. Would it be nice if him and Dave Brock kind of patched things up and got together and just did kind of like one Hawkwind faction? Sure it would. Uh, don't think that's ever going to happen. But for now, it's kind of cool to have them both. So you got Hawkwind with Dave Brock's guys, and then you got Nick Turner and his uh, cast of Merry Men doing their similar style thing. So not necessarily a bad thing to have if you're a Space Rock fan. But, so anyway, investigate that. All right, we're going to go over to, um, back over to that. Well, we're going to go all over the pond, right? Dutch guys, okay? Uh, Robin Taylor, 
fantastic musician who's been doing bits of jazz and avant-garde and progressive rock for a long, long, long time. If you're a fan of Sia Tranquilla, you've no doubt followed along with us the career of Robin Taylor and his Taylor's Free Universe and Taylor's Universe. Well, he's got a, a new album out under the Taylor's Universe moniker. It's called Almost Perfected. Mostly instrumental, little bits of vocals in uh, in here as well. But basically what this is, is uh, Robin has gone back into his very vast back catalog, found some songs that, that were done years ago that maybe he wasn't overly satisfied with the way they originally came out. He's decided to come back and revisit them, re-record them with this current band, the current Taylor's Universe, who for, for the most part never took part or played any of these songs because this was from a while back. These tunes are from, from many years ago on previous albums. The band have gone in, re-recorded these, given them a new spin with today's technologies, with today's lineup. Very, very solid. Uh, there's only four tracks. They're all pretty lengthy. you got Mean Attack, Clocks in Almost 12 Minutes, Definitely Greek, He Said, Almost 11 Minutes, Remembering Johannesburg, About 10, and Dark Side of Alec, which is a near 15-minute epic. It's all great. Got, like I said, you got bits of jazz and jazz fusion, some prog, you know, a couple tunes have a little Yes Genesis feel, sometimes a little King Crimson, otherwise it's just classic jazz and jazz rock. Really good stuff, great guitar work, a lot of cool keyboards, uh, you got some uh, sax as well. I really dig it a lot. If you kind of like your jazz with a proggy slant to it, you can't go wrong with Taylor's Universe, Robin Taylor and Company. Investigate that one. Good stuff. All right, next up, a live album from a legendary band who I happened to see just last week. Blew my mind to smithereens, folks, uh, and I've seen them before. However, there's something about this show, this tour, that just, uh, just completely had my jaw hanging on the floor. I'm talking about King Crimson. They've got a new live album called Live in Chicago from June 28th of this particular tour. There's the bad boy right there. So, you know, I'm not sure exactly what the story was. Uh, if you're familiar at all with the current tour, by the way, this is a fantastic little, you know, hardbound CD booklet, two discs, all sorts of fun stuff in here. Basically, Crimson's out on the road with their extended band, three guitars in the front of the stage, Fripp. Jacob Jasek on, vocal, on vocals and guitar. You got another keyboard player. You got Mel Collins on back in the band on sax and flute and all sorts of other things. You got Tony Levin doing his thing. Uh, perhaps due to the death of both Greg Lake and John Wetton over the last year, year and a half, perhaps uh, Fripp has, Robert Fripp has decided to go back deep into their catalog and recreate and perform a lot of those old, old staples from the band that really modern incarnation of King Crimson haven't really tackled. So you're going to get stuff off in the Court of the Crimson King, in the Wake of Poseidon, um, Lizard, Islands, that era stuff. Of course, you know, Starless and Bible Black and Lark's Tongues and Aspic and Red, all those real vintage albums, right? So, of course, you know, on this live album, and, and again, I just saw, this, this is mind-blowing, is what I just witnessed firsthand the other day. Uh, you know, you get Lark's Tongues and Aspic Part 1. You got some newer stuff in here, too. Neurotica, The Errors, Circus. Great. Great. It just blew my mind watching and hearing that, and, and it's on here, which is great. Uh, the Lizard Suite. How cool is that? Uh, have they ever done that live other than way back in the day? Don't know. A Gorgeous Fallen Angel. Lark's Tongues and Aspect Part 2. Islands. <laughs> you know, pictures of a City. I mean, come on. Indiscipline. Okay, from the uh, early 80s band with Baloo. Uh, the Construction of Light. A little more later era stuff. Easy Money, for crying out loud. A Wet and Ruford era classic. The letters, you got an interlude, meltdown, radical action, level five, and then the, the last three. Uh, Starless, just gorgeous. Heroes, a cover of the David Bowie classic, and 21st Century Schizoid Man. All right, when I saw them, they also played Epitaph and in the Court of the Crimson King, which is just incredible. So you got to have this. If you're a King Crimson fan, you got to own this. And you got to get your ass to one of the shows they're playing. I'm telling you, you will not regret it. 
Probably one of the best shows I've seen in years. Just mind-blowingly good, folks. All right, another legacy band. Moving over to kind of hard rock. we got the British veterans, legends, UFO, the Salentino Cuts. This is basically UFO doing a bunch of covers of songs they love. What I like about this is that there's a lot of picks in here that you would I would have never... I would have never guessed they would tackle. That's, for me, the makings of a successful covers album. Because so many bands, they do covers albums, and they pick like the, the same songs that everybody else does, things that are just so typical. You know, I want to hear bands doing stuff that you wouldn't expect, not necessarily the most popular songs out there, and giving them their own twist. So while there's a couple of the kind of, yeah, I could kind of see that, here, for the most part, there's, it's not. So, like, um, you know, Heart Full of Soul by the Yardbirds, fantastic. Uh, you know, Break On Through by the Doors, could have they, they do a good job on it. I could have done without that. Everybody does that. Uh, Mad Seasons, Rivers of Deceit, you know? Uh, oh, River of Deceit, sorry. Very, very cool. They do a great job on here. I wouldn't have thought that. Uh, the Pusher by Steppenwolf. How cool is that? Uh, what else we got here? Paper and Fire. A John Cougar Mellencamp song that they actually kick ass with. Great choice. What else? Montrose's Rock Candy. Phil Mogg is really doing a good job on that one, as is uh, Vinnie Moore. Uh, Mississippi Queen. Okay, kind of typical, but it's awesome. Okay, Vinnie Moore again laying out the riffs. Uh, Ain't No Sunshine When You Go On. Good choice. Phil, you know Phil Mogg loves all the old soul and R&B stuff, so there's a good one there. Uh, Honey Bee by Tom Petty. Never would have thought UFO would do that. They give it their own spin. It's heavy. It's rocking. Uh, what else? Uh, Two Rolling Stone by Robin, Robin Trower. One of my favorite all-time songs by one of my favorite all-time guitar players. And I'm guessing Vinnie Moore is a huge fan, too, because let me tell you, you listen to their version of this, you'd swear it was Robin Trower circa 1974 playing on here. That's how close Vinny gets to that actual tone. Amazing. Uh, what else? Just Got Paid by ZZ Top. Very cool. And then uh, It's My Life, which is also kind of neat. So, uh, you know, a lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff. What happened here? Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. I thought... Uh, thought we lost it for a minute. <laughs> my, my screen kind of shrank, and I was like, what happened? So we're still going. Are we still going? Yes, we're still going. Cool. All right. UFO, Salentino Cuts. Check it out. Uh, we're going to move over to the band Focus, a legendary prog act. It's called Focus the Family Album. Look at that cool Roger Dean artwork there, folks. Two-disc set. This is basically a collection of uh, kind of rarities and uh, extra stuff and solo cuts from the current incarnation of the band that uh, they've, they've done over the last kind of decade or so. Things that didn't make uh, some previous albums. A couple uh, looks ahead to an album that's coming out very shortly, the Focus 11 album, as well as some like instrumental solo bits by the guys in the band. I kind of dig it. It's pretty cool. You know, you got in the band right now, you've got, uh, let's see, guitar player uh, Menno... Jukjus, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Pierre Vanderlyn, longtime drummer. Uh, Thiz Van Leer, okay, founding member, flute and uh, keyboards. And then new bass player Udo Panikit, right? He replaces uh, Bobby Jacobs. I like it. Mostly in instrumental for the most part. You know, ripping guitar work, sweeping flute and Hammond organ. Nimble bass, cool rhythms, mixes of prog and a little folky stuff and some jazz and, you know, focus. It's all, it's, they've never done anything that wasn't cool and totally classy. And that's, uh, you know, that continues on here. Two discs, a lot of good stuff. Soak this in as you get ready for the next uh, studio album. All right. Very cool band that I love a lot. Um, if you're into like kind of classic doom and stoner, stoner rock, stoner metal, whatever, biker rock, you gotta love these guys. Uh, the Uncle Acid and the Deadbeats. This is basically a reissue, reissue of their very first album, which uh, long out of print. I don't think they even printed up many copies of it initially. Called Volume One. They've gone back in, reissued, remastered it in all its glory. And this is Uncle Acid from in the very beginning. Uh, the Sabbath, the Black Sabbath influences are all over the place here. It's like Black Sabbath meets the Beatles, right? You get kind of those high pitched, kind of unique. John Lennon-ish vocals meeting these ridiculous 
Black Sabbath riffs, occasional Hammond organ, all of Deep Purple type of thing. So you get nine tracks. It's heavy. It's groovy. I just dig this a lot. If you like Uncle Acid and the Deadbeats and you always wanted to hear kind of where they started with and you heard about this kind of uh, rumored first album that they did that nobody owns, well, now you can have it thanks to the uh, Rise Above folks. Go out and get this at all costs if you love that sort of thing. All right, we're drawn to a conclusion here. So um, speaking of Black Sabbath, you know, one of my top two favorite bands of all time, probably the most important band to me. Uh, Deep Purple may be my favorite band. Uh, Black Sabbath is number two, but there's just no denying the impact on my life that this band has had. Easily the most important musical force in my life ever. That's just the way it is. Uh, as you know, they went and did that last tour called The End. Uh, apparently, that's it. No more Black Sabbath anymore. This is their final show in Birmingham from February of this year. It's on Blu-ray, Eagle Rock Records, Eagle Rock Music, whatever you want to call them, Eagle Vision. Basically, you got the whole show on Blu-ray, plus a CD with... Um, tracks from the Angelica sessions, which is also included on the Blu-ray. Those were basically where they, in the studio, they went in and, re and filmed them uh, doing some tunes that they didn't play live, that they don't play live, that they haven't played live, which I wish they would have, uh, namely The Wizard, Wicked World, Sweet Leaf, Tomorrow's Dream, and Changes. How cool is that? So you see them in the, in the studio running through these tunes. Very, very cool. You know, the main set, it's pretty lengthy. You got all the stuff you'd expect. Uh, with a cool f few things like Under the Sun, After Forever, you know, Fairies Wear Boots, Into the Void, Snowblind, War Pigs, Behind the Wall of Sleep, uh, NIB, Hand of Doom, a little nice little medley with a drum solo. You got bits of Supernaut, Sabbath Bloody Sabbath, Megalomania, you know, cool, very cool. Rat Salad, and then you, of course you got Iron Man, Children of the Grave, Paranoid, War Pigs, Black Sabbath, and uh, Dirty Women, which I love. Uh, you know, the band was in top form here, their very last show ever. I got to admit, shed a couple tears watching this. I was thankful enough to see them a couple times on their last few tours. Um, but just kind of watching this was a little bittersweet as much as I enjoyed it. The thought of never being able to see Black Sabbath in whatever incarnation. Obviously, Dio is gone, so that ship has sailed. Um, Ozzy's going to go back and do a solo thing, and I'm sure Tony and Geezer are going to find other projects to do, but just the thought of never seeing Black Sabbath live again kind of kind of hurts a little bit, but it was inevitable, I guess. But anyway, uh, this is a great commemorative of their final show, and of course they should bring it back to where it all began in Birmingham, England. Great. This is just fantastic. Go out and, and make sure you own this. Buy it, own it, watch it, cherish it, love it, you know. With that, our last thing of the day, our last bit of business is forgotten favorites. I'm going to move over to classic Norwegian, actually, I'm sorry, Swedish, <laughs> melodic death metal, Norwegian. No, it was on the Norway thing earlier on. I'm going to Sweden, folks. Uh, this is actually the first album I ever got by this band. It's still my favorite to this day. I just love it to death. It is a band that has a lot of fans out there and count me as one of them. I'm talking about Dark Tranquility. The album is called Character. This is uh, from, what, 2005, I believe? A little mid-period winner from them. They had a lot of great ones before it, a lot of great ones after it. They're still doing great stuff. You know, for my money... Uh, you can say all you want about, you know, at the gates and, well, you know, forget soil work now and you can forget in flames now. They're all doing all sorts of different other things that aren't, I wouldn't classify as death metal anymore. But, you know, these guys, Dark Tranquility, have stayed the path. Uh, I, other than maybe an album or two that are a little subpar, pretty much everything they've ever released, in my opinion, is just top notch. This is what melodic death metal should be. It's savage. Okay. It's heavy. It's complex at times. It's a little progressive at times. This is just this this and it's melodic. You know the stuff that's catchy is as kind of like harsh as a lot of the vocals are. Uh, catchy arrangements, the arrangements, great melodies, kicking guitar work, little electronic keyboards going on. You know a little bit of everything. I, I dig this album a lot. Like I said, it's still to this day my favorite Dark Tranquility album amongst a lot of favorites. 
Um, you don't hear people talking about it as often as they should, in my opinion. Maybe it's because the first one I really got into. It's near and dear to me. But I know most Dark, Tran Dark, Tranquility, blah, Dark Tranquility fans uh, love this one as well. So for me, it's my forgotten favorite of the day. Make sure you go and check it out if you haven't. And uh, that's going to draw to a close this near 25-minute episode of What's Hot with Seeing Tranquility. I'm your host, Pete Pardo. Visit us on the web at www.seetranquility.org. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're here on the mighty YouTube. Go check out reviews of all this stuff and many more on our website. Until next time, don't forget the classics. Investigate the new music. We'll see you. Take care.